so I dug real deep into it and I got to the understanding that we're living in a multi dimensional universe and there's at least 11 dimensions. Otherwise the universe would collapse. Each dimension is a 90 degree angle right above the next one compactified. So they're sitting right on top of us. So within less than a Planck unit of space above you, there is another dimension that actually exists with a whole other universe happening simultaneously while we're sitting right here. Wild. That's hard to fathom. It's hard to, it's hard to fathom. So right here where we're sitting right now, there's a whole nother dimension of of a whole nother universe happening, life taking place. Yes. Right in the same space that we are. Right, right, right here, right here where we are right here. Vast too, vast, just as vast as ours is vast. And uh, from higher dimensions, they experience time differently. Time really doesn't exist. The past, present, and the future happen all at once. So somebody, for example, uh, from the fifth dimension would look at us, and they'd be able to see us. Imagine us in this building here, but imagine when I first walked in, and imagine us in here, and imagine me like in the bathroom or something. They'd be able to see us in all the different rooms. The different rooms represent different time frames Mm. of existence within this structure. So they could see the past, present, and future at the same time. Uh, You know, so it's pretty cool weird stuff starts happening the higher the dimensions you go so is the idea that when you're in a higher dimension you can only you can see below lower dimensions but you can't see dimensions above you exactly unless you have the capability of matching first you have to obtain the frequency of a higher dimension and then match that frequency to be able to walk in so match the frequency yeah so for example um okay my hand is stopped now by this table right? right why is it stopped i'm not really touching the table there's repulsion going on, electromagnetic repulsion between the electrons in my hands repelling the electrons in the table. You don't really touch anything. Now, if I can match the subatomic frequency of the atoms in this chunk of wood here on this table I could, um, with my hand, I would be able to pass my hand right through this table unscathed. Why? Because atoms are 99.999% empty space. Nothing is really here. Everything is only a light wave slowed down to a particular frequency. And so if you can match frequencies, you can merge with things. You can walk through walls and all that kind of stuff. The things that are seen paranormal could be advanced beings have tapped into some type of uh, understanding of how to match different frequencies in our dimension and appear apparition-y, apparitional or, or, or paranormal. But in true reality, they could just be taking a peek in. And how do we come to the understanding that these higher dimensions exist? Like, what is the most basic evidence that we have of this? Quantum physics uh, proves it. See, when we look into the quantum world, everything changed. In standard physics is where we have where we are right now on the large side of physics. But the smaller you go, the more weird things get. We find that particles transphase in and out of existence, and they go to different dimensions. We even know now that some of our synapses of our thoughts in our brain phase out of this dimension and they go somewhere else and then they come back again. And this has all been tracked and traced through the understanding of quantum mechanics and quantum physics Mm -hmm. and understanding that dimensions exist. Uh, The biggest way that we made a model of this is we, we figured out how to create something called quasi crystals. Now these quasi crystals are these multidimensional crystals. We actually created an eighth dimensional quasi crystal. We created this. Yes, we created. How did we create it? We created a laboratory okay. using different technologies. And then from that eighth dimensional quasi crystal, it casts a it casts a shadow of itself down to a fourth dimensional quasi crystal, which then casts down a shadow which creates a sphere. So we know that the the universe is most likely the shadow of a higher dimension. It's crazy stuff. Yeah, that's kind of (laughs) mind bending. (laughs) We're living in a light matrix, which is actually a light matrix, which is a shadow of a high, a much higher dimension. And so we know this because they created these crystals, these quasi crystals. And when they put them at different angles, they cast shadows. Sometimes. What do these crystals look like? Do you you look up the quasi crystals? Yeah, they look like. um, Have you ever seen a Dinkra codes? Adinkras. I think I heard you talk about this yeah. before. No, they I, look like Adinkra the symbols, mathematical symbols, but in the third dimensional time space. Uh, and so, if you take them and throw, pull them out into a three dimensional, third dimensional time space, mm-hmm. they look like these um, lines that are connected with these nodes, like that. You see, <clears throat> quasi crystals. This is a quasi crystal. Yeah. And so, it's an ordered structure, but it's not periodic. And uh, it's got a it's crystalline formed pattern. atomically. Yeah, 
in a manner somewhere between the amorpha solids of glass of glasses special forms of metals and other minerals as well as common glass and the precise pattern of crystals yeah so huh. if you type in eighth if you put eighth dimensional quasi crystal uh you should see some research that it come looks up on that. like uh what you look into a kaleidoscope it's a fractal it's all about fractal. We live in a fractal holographic universe. The quasi-crystal is a fundamental basis of the fractal holography that we're living in. We're fully immersed in it, so we can't detect it, but we're living in a light matrix. And that's what the Adinkra codes also prove. Okay, explain the Adinkra codes. What is that exactly? So, Professor James Gates Jr., University of Maryland, former uh, scientific advisor to President Obama, just to give you, like, this guy, he's not just like a jackpot or something. He's like okay. a real dude, you know? <laughs> yeah. And he put together a team of the most incredible supersymmetry and theoretical physicists in the world, mm -hmm. like the top brains in the world on this. And they started analyzing what is the ether of space time? What is this soup that we're living in that we're inhabiting this universe? What is it? What is it made of? What is, what's powering it? They discovered something called Adinkra codes, which go back to the ancient Dogon tribe from Mali, Africa. The original inhabitants of the land of Cam then moved to Mali later after they were thrown, thrown out, uh, taken over at one point. But they still kept this ancient knowledge in, in, in Mali about these Adinkra codes and they would draw these patterns. Well, he discovered that these patterns are actually mathematical codes. And these are not just any mathematical code. There goes one there. They're actually the codes that describe the ether of space time itself. They're error correcting codes, the same exact codes that run our search engines and web browsers that we're using right now to look at the image. There's coding behind that screen that runs this, what we just did. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It's the same code that runs the universe. So we discovered that we're living in a that we're living in a programmed light matrix. There's a software programmer that has written this code. Austin, pull up more images of this. There's all different types of images. There you go. See now that you see that one there, right there. That's a quasi. That looks like a lot like a quasi crystal. If you were to shrink it down and put a whole bunch of them in one location, it looks very similar to a quasi crystal. So these are Dinkra codes, uh, and you can see the colorful one that was up there. Um, these are depicting the nature of reality. Wow. And they actually are mathematical programming code. They're a special type of code, though. They're error correcting code. The same type that that Google browser is running on is the same thing that runs the universe. Error correcting codes. Yeah. And what what do we gain from all of this knowledge? Like, what does this tell us? And where do we where do we take this? Like, what is the obviously this is like foundational knowledge right. for us. But like, where do you see it going? Well, if you understand it, we're living in a fractal holographic light matrix. It doesn't mean we're not real. It just means that there is a creator or creators that were living in something that was created, just like the ancient texts and all the scribes and, and biblical texts and everything else says. But it tells us, wow, this is the method of the creation. Now we're getting closer to understanding what we really are. We understand now that consciousness isn't made inside this avatar body, that the avatar body doesn't even exist, that consciousness is a stream of something you know coming from somewhere else and it's being mm. picked up in this matrix with this coding if you took all the humans on earth there's eight billion humans on earth if i took all eight billion humans and removed the empty space between their atoms i can fit every human into a sugar cube one sugar cube can hold all eight billion of us really yeah all eight all the atoms of eight billion people on earth you could take you could see atoms are empty space so if you take the empty space out you collapse it into one sugar cube all eight billion can fit in one sugar cube so what does That's that mean? Wild. Who, what, who, who, what's here? There's only one consciousness, it seems. And it looks, it's like a radio station that's transmitting out a frequency from a higher dimension. Our avatar bodies pick up that frequency. You're 99.1, I'm 99.2, he's 99.3, but it's still coming from the same source. And so we're all coming from the same source. It's like the universe has found a way to live subjectively through multiple entities, but not even through entities, even through objects that we consider to be man-made because every atom we know now in quantum physics is also conscious does this give any credence to the simulation theory absolutely this we're living in a simulation this is an actual simulation